This is my sixth finger. Welcome back to SmartTube. Today I have something cool to share with you, as it is like having six finger on your hand. A smart finger for your smart home setup. Meet the Fingerbot Plus. SmartTube welcomes. Consider subscribing. Let's go. Imagine being able to turn any traditional switch or button into your home into a smart one with just a click. And if that sounds futuristic, that's exactly what the FingerBot Plus aims to do. You can control this FingerBot from anywhere using the Smart Life app to your smart or home assistant as I'm going to do. And what's the best part? You don't need to worry about charging as it's a battery powered device. This is a Zigbee version but you can also find a Bluetooth version and for both of them you need a gateway. In my case I'm using the Home Assistant and a Son of Dongle as a great gateway for the Zigbee devices so I will connect to that dongle but you can also purchase a, a Tuya Zigbee gateway which can be also a Bluetooth gateway. I bought this product for around $5 so it was quite cheap but I had a big discount because of the AliExpress uh, deal and that was in the choice uh, category and the link to the product you can find in the video description. If you still don't know how it works and what it does, so the device has an arm that you can control. It can go down and then up so it can push the button. However, it's not everything what it does. More features you will see later in this video. And as usually, I think we can go now to the box and let's see what's there. So on the front, you can already see the device. We have the Zigbee that was already set and instruction for you. So actually, we'll need to open the cover to pull out the insulating uh, sheet from the battery. So the device will then turn on. Then we can scan the QR code on the box to download the application and where we'll be able to add the device to Tuya Smart, for example. And on the side, you can download a a digital user manual by scanning this code and here we can control by app by your voice we can create timers and schedules this is what we we already set and we can actually also click on the device to control it and this one qr code is scanned to connect so i assume you will be then forwarded to the google shop to download the application and on the back we have the specs so the maximum movement is uh, 12 millimeters and the weight is 40 grams. Along with the device we have uh, 3M tape in two pieces and the battery CR2. And here it's quite interesting, the, the pushing force is 10 N newtons. So that's it about the box and let's go to inside and see what we have there. So it's, it looks fine. In touch it is not that it doesn't feel cheap. Here we have the button. I, don't know, I cannot click it, so maybe it's like a touch touch button. Hmm, this is quite interesting. It looks like you, we can change those, uh, let's say, fingers, so you can have different types. And I actually saw it on the internet that you can act, that you can purchase different sets. So I assume for a different purpose, you can have different fingers. So those ends. So I have the standard one. I didn't purchase any other and I hope that's gonna be enough for my users. Okay so that's it and now I think we can open the cover to see what's inside. Okay you have to open it from the top and now we are inside. So that's the finger port. Here is the button to reset so if you click it for the for a few seconds the device will go into the pairing mode and here we can download the manual user manual and here we have pull so if we take it out the device will be turned on and actually this is what we want to do so i'm taking out the sheet and we can see a blue light so i assume now it is in the pairing mode and will look for any gateway to connect but actually for now i won't connect it so let's maybe assemble the back and see how it works so now what i will do i will press the button from the top Hmm. Nice, funny. So it's actually quite hard to press it, it's not very easy. So, so you can hear some noise. I would say it's maybe a bit too loud, but would not make any problem to hear it. So I would say that it's, it's fine. 
So I actually didn't press it even hard, like slightly push the finger over it. Yeah, so it's like a touch touchpad. So you can just click it, you don't need to press it hard and, and the, the device will press the button or switch or whatever. Okay, so we have the device, it's working. What's else inside? I think there was a free end tape and we have one and there should be a second one which is okay i have it which is which is here so that's everything what we have in the box so you can ask why why there is no manual i think i'm done fine with it you can download it from the qr code from the device from the back and also from this side of the box. I don't have any Zigbee gateways for Tuya Smart. So what I will do, I will add it to the Home Assistant. So the device will be visible in the Home Assistant and I, I will be able to connect it to all my devices that are in the Home Assistant. And then thanks to that, we can create much more powerful automations, scents and whatever. So now I will move to the Home Assistant and at the, at the same time, I will reset the device to put it to the pairing mode. We are in the Home Assistant. So now as I'm using Son of Dongle and Zigbee 2 MQTT, I need to open the zigbee2 mqtt then set then click on the permit join all so every device that can be a router a router or coordinator will now be able to get to pair with the fingerbot so i'm clicking permit join and now i'm restarting the fingerbot by pressing the restart button for a few seconds until the blue light will start blinking okay it started blinking and now as you can see the new device has joined our network. I'm very curious whether I will be able to run or turn on the device, but also with uh, an option that the button will be pressed for longer, not just pressed and released, but pressed and I know two seconds and then release. So let's see how it all looks like. So at the bottom I can see, nice, this is uh, exactly that device. This is the Tuya. It's online on the battery, so everything is correct. Now uh, let me enter it and see what the device is exposing and how can we use it. So I'm going to the exposes. So we have two, uh, three different working modes. So we have click, switch and program. Okay, and there is a delay, sustain time. So I assume this allows us to press a button and don't release it, release it. Oh, touch control, so we can turn off the button on the device. And then we have reverse, so we can turn off that. So as I understand, if we turn off it, if we click the button on the device, the finger will go down and it will stay there. And if we click it again, the finger will go up. So the movement limit, so, okay, so it's not going to the bottom of the bottom. So it was 85%. So let's see what are those different modes are, what are those different modes uh, doing. So now what I can do, I can also start recording of my, of the fingerboard, not just only the, the computer. Now what I will do, I will change the mode to the click. And do I need to save it? No. Okay, and let me maybe find a button where I can run it. So it's going to developers, tools, states, and then let's find the switch. So that's that. Okay, I see a delay. So as you could see that I'm clicking now the button. So I know it's like two seconds. And as you can see now it is on. And if I will turn it off, it will again move the fingerboard. And I think there is a delay like two seconds. So let's one, one more time count it. One, two, three. I don't know, maybe two, three seconds between that device is starting to move the finger. So, okay, so that's that. And now what I will do, I will go to the switch. So as you can see, it went down. So switch off, turn it on. So it went up a bit and off, down. So actually, I, I assume these are the presets that you can use. Yeah, presets that you can, that we can use. 
so upper 0%, so if I change it, it does what? Okay, because it doesn't need to move very to the top, so uh, like that. So let's see what's happening. Yeah, so it's not moving. So by those two slides, you can you can tell the the finger how far it should go down and when it should stop when it's gonna do, do the reverse. So in terms of the delay, so let's say we have two seconds and now let's check how the delay is working. So I'm going back to the switch on, actually off, okay, it's keeping and then off. Nice. So actually I have a first user story, so how I could use it. So I could use the intercom as my intercom is not smart intercom and to open the, the wicket, the doors to the fence, I need to click the button. So actually I could take the fingerboard there on the intercom and over the button it would just open the wicket, the gate in the fence. So that's that's actually maybe the final destination of the fingerboard, at least for now. Okay, so we know how the delay is working. So in, with the reverse, with the reverse, it won't go back after running, turning it on, and then we can deactivate the touch touch control, which is on the on the device. So from the setup, I think that's it. Maybe I will go to the three seconds here, or maybe at the at the end I will change it. But yeah. So that's fine, and maybe last I will run it. Oh, now it was very quick. So, oh, it's not even as I know a second after clicking the button. So it's very quick. Okay, but for sure it's working at least for now. Okay, great, and I already show you how to set up it. And in the Home Assistant, you have full control over it, and that's really really great. So in terms of device, we can move now just to the device. How can you, or for what, you can use this fingerboard, your six finger. I already said about one, one user story. So opening the wicket, and generally if you have any other devices that require just click one button, the fingerboard will be a, a device that can make that device smart. So smart automated. So if you have a, a coffee machine that requires just clicking one button to uh, a coffee, then that could be used for that. Unfortunately, my coffee machine requires clicking two buttons, plus I'm using milk. So the milk is usually in the fridge, and for me, unfortunately, that won't work. You can have some toys that requires to click uh, some buttons, I don't know, some light for the kids uh, during the night. Or so maybe you can set it up the way that the fingerboard would click the button, the light would go on, and I know after 10 minutes the light turn off, but you have the fingerboard, and you can click again the button, and the kids will have the... Uh, the sky on its on their sailing. Another cool use case could be that you take this device, you put it on the keyboard, and thanks to the fingerboard, your computer won't go to sleep. Sometimes you cannot change those settings, so after not touching anything on the computer, it will go to sleep, and the fingerboard can prevent that. I've seen some pet feeders, so with a fingerboard, you can by clicking the button you could give the pet the food and you can create the schedules, some timers and the food will be served to your pet at specific hours. If you have this device and you are using it in some occasions and for some for some, for some tasks, please let us know in the comment section. If you are interested in this device, you can find the link in the video description. I think I paid a very good price for it because it was around four or five dollars. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and see you next time. Bye.